Days since lockdown began? 154. Days since my neighbours started accusing me with their eyes of trying to kill them? 154. Days since my comedy career started to take off? Let's have it! Sinead Quinlan, ladies and gentlemen! 185. Hello. It was stone mad hearing the actual Ray Darcy saying... The winner of Stand Up Be Funny is... Sinead Quinlan. <laughs> Day since my comedy career was cruelly ended by a global pandemic. 154. The gigs are gone, but I did try to keep the stand-up going for a while. I used to date a guy with one leg who worked in a brewery. He was in charge of the hops. I've been trying to keep myself busy. I even started going back to mass for a bit of social interaction. No, things have changed quite a bit. <laughs> Father Power was like, now again, just a quick reminder that the peace with which you handshake has been replaced with the new and very modern. Seen my ex-boyfriend there this week. Things didn't end too well between us, but I don't think there's any hard feelings. Now, I'll be honest here. The main reason I started going back to Mass was for the stage time. Because the church has the only available live audience these days. A gas man, he was indeed. Even if it is delivering the debt notices. Frank Murphy will be greatly missed by all of us here in the community. But Frank Murphy was like, I'm actually alive. Oh, I definitely have the wrong name here, so... <laughs> um, I wonder which Frank is reposing peacefully at his home today at four, then? I had to try and win the crowd back. Uh, I have a good joke about wakes, actually. <laughs> What's the difference between an Irish wedding and an Irish wake? <laughs> One less drunk. <laughs> Seriously, Sinead. Anyway, uh, our thoughts are with not Frank Murphy, who is very much alive, uh, but with the deceased and his family at this time. I got a good five minutes set out of it all the same. Went pretty well, I think. All right, guys, I think I'll hand you back to the MC, or should I say, JC. <laughs> it was an epic closer, like. So that's where I'm at currently. I'm sure I can get Father Power up to seven minutes next week. So that's something at least. And in the current circumstances, something is better than nothing. Now that I'm back working on my stand-up, maybe it's time to focus on a bit of a lockdown love life. Who knows? Maybe there'll be something there too. Days since lockdown began, 167. Days since I've made a show of myself, three. I was strolling down Patrick Street minding my own business when a tampon went rogue on me. I tried to style it out. But of course I was like, thanks are brilliant. It's always amazed me that I can get up on stage no bother but put me in a one-to-one -one situation and I crumble. The other day I met my neighbour and I said to him, all right, bye, how are you? And he was like, not great, to be honest. He really caught me off guard. I presume we just walked past each other saying that everything was fine in the normal Irish emotionally suppressed manner. So I said to him, do you know what you are now? An absolute breath of fresh air. Fair play to you, Your honesty is quite simply refreshing. His black suit suddenly made a lot of sense. I thought to myself, brilliant, another embarrassing moment to add to the list. I continued walking when out of nowhere, I got this unmerciful craving for a bit of corned beef. Now I've never bought corned beef before and due to social distancing, I had to roar to be heard. 
So I was like, Sonny, uh, do you sell corned beef here? I don't know why, but when I get nervous, my Cork accent gets ten times stronger. I think it's a defence mechanism. He just looked me dead in the eye and said, Yeah. So I said, Right. Uh, sorry about this now, but I've never actually bought corned beef before, so what's the procedure here exactly? I'm going to miss home and away over this one. He said, Well, most people know how many slices they want and just ask for that amount of slices. I kind of panicked and said, um, could I get 20 slices, so? Hold on there, actually. Is that an excessive amount of corned beef for one person? Then he said, Well, it depends how hungry you are, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Good. Do you want the 20 slices or what? Oh, Jesus. Y- yeah, look, we'll go with the 20. Thanks very much. By the time I'd plucked up the courage to talk to Jack, he was gone. But he was the least of my worries because I had just ordered 20 slices of corned beef and I was suddenly extremely aware that I only had a fiver on me. By now I was sweating so much I would have given Christy Moore a run for his money. The last time I was this stressed was at my leaving cert Irish Oral. The first words out of my mouth were Connoisseur Meanwhile, Back at the till, I'm thinking, Mother of God, I can't afford this. When the world opens back up, all my friends will be heading off to Australia and they'll be like, You coming to Bondi, Sinead? And I'll be like, Nah, still paying off my corned beef, girl. Then, just before I completely dehydrated, your man went, That'll be 3.15. So, all in all, not my most successful day. But at least I know what about corned beef now. Hey. You awake? Remember earlier on when you told a man that his grief was refreshing? <laughs> Day since lockdown began, 160. Day since I rewatched that bit in Normal People with the shorts. Zero. Day since I've had any bit of, um, a Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Lords. Saw my ex at mass the other day when I was getting a few minutes of stage time. Jesus, he was looking well. We knew we were no good for each other, but couldn't leave each other go either. He rang me and he was all like, come here. Look, I know we broke up, but I just wanted to ring there to say you left a pair of fluffy socks here and like, I know you love them socks, like, so if you wanted to come over and collect them, that'd be fine, you know? And I was like, yeah, you really shouldn't be calling me, like, but I am running low on them, actually. And he's like, Yeah, look, whatever. I just said I'd say it to you, like, and if I was to possibly order food, not for you now, like, but what would be your preference, do you think? And then I was like, Well, I'm not staying, like, I'll just be collecting the fluffy socks and going, but if I was to choose a food preference, it would probably be pizza, do you know? But, like, it doesn't matter, because I'm definitely not staying. It just kind of went on like that for a while. Until I finally called it quits and blocked him on everything. The dating scene is pretty rough out there, but I'd love to find my own Tom Hanks. My friend Becky is all over it. She's like, yeah, two months we're seeing each other now and it's going really well. It does take him three days to reply sometimes, but that's just because he's super busy, you know? Busy during a global pandemic. Seems legit. So have you guys put a label on things yet, or are you just seeing how it goes? But she's pure delusional, like. Funnily enough, he did say the other day that I was a great person, but that he respects me too much to move too quickly. So, yeah, I suppose we're taking things slow. So I had to call her on it, like. Have you always been this delusional, or since birth, yeah? 
Oh, I do everything else with Spar and Breach, they say. That would explain a lot, actually. I did try internet dating, but lads these days are all the same, like. Come here. If you were a fruit, you'd be a fine apple. Any chance of me getting a sexy picture off you then? The indignity of it, like. So after getting ghosted one too many times, I decided to hit the town. Then, there he was, Jack Moynihan. Visited his auntie in Queens in January, and he's been ooze and glamour ever since. It's all about the eye contact when you're wearing a mask, smizing away to beat the band. So things are going pretty well. I definitely made an impression on Jack anyway. Maybe he'll come see one of my sets in mass. Hmm, next goal. To tackle my social awkwardness, Rob Kearney style. Quoting Tiger King, 100. Days since I took a pregnancy test, um, one. I haven't actually had anyone hocus my pocus in quite some time, but I do have an irrational fear of immaculate conception. be getting ahead of myself, but after two steamy encounters with Jack, things are on the rise, and it won't be the only thing on the rise all going well. So I've decided to go on the pill. The pill, however, is like having to choose between a baby or depression. The hardest thing about the pill is remembering to take it every day. So I'm after setting an alarm to remind me. But I didn't really think it through. I had a very awkward interaction with my neighbour Bridget the other day. Bridget's taken no chances with this virus around. Bridget! How are you keeping? Lovely day. Great to get some sun in the skin. Naturally enough, Bridget asked me, What's the alarm for? And the Catholic guilt just got me. I just shouted the first thing that came into my head. That's a, a reminder for me to go for a walk. There's no flies on Bridget though. Sinead, aren't you currently on a walk though? Uh, yes, but this is a reminder to continue walking whilst on the original walk and uh, it keeps me from getting lost as well. Handy, like. Oh my God, look, the virus! Fear of pregnancy. Under control. I might as well use lockdown to tackle the other ones on my list. The main difference between human beings and animals is speech. And parrots just mess with that. They're like, nah, we're different, boy. We can speak, actually. And apparently, everyone in the world has just kind of normalised this somehow. Which became clear when I set up a fear of parrot society and only my dad showed up for moral support. And I had to admit, nobody's going to show up, are they, Dad? But Dad was more focused on the snacks, to be honest. More biscuits for us, Sinead. I have this theory that other birds can speak as well. They just don't let us know about it. Steady or one. Lanky legs on her. Sesame Street call, love. They want big birds' legs back. But I very much had the last laugh. The idea of a laser has always scared me. Maybe because it reminds me of James Bond films. But life really is too short to be shaving. So here I was, flat on my back, thinking of Ireland, when... 
Oh, sorry, wrong room. Oh my god, Sinead, what's the crack? I thought I was in complete incognito mode, like, but... Uh, how did you know it was me? I'd never forget it. Face. It's fair to say, I successfully faced all my fears. You told me this wouldn't hurt, you piece of sh And all in good time, because my stand-up career is really taken off. I'm even after getting a new gig, opening for confirmations. Hasn't Jack only gone and asked me on a date? He's meeting me here in a minute. Play cool, Sinead, play cool. Brilliant. Just brilliant. God, I really hate birds. We hate you too, Bjorn.